I like Fallout, the post-apocalyptic staple of the gaming world that millions around the world enjoy. Hell, it's one of the few games that made a TV show that doesn't suck. And like any old Fallout fan, I happen to keep up with a lot of the fan-made projects that are being developed for the game. Fallout and Bethesda games in general have a huge modding community that's incredibly passionate about the game, and a lot of modders have banded together to make huge DLC-sized mods within the Fallout universe. But none of the ones currently in development have reached a release. In fact, I can only find one mod so far like that. It came out in 2021 and even has Ray Che's voice a character in it. Oh, this must be good! The Deathclaw's wandering eyes convey all you need to know. You are looking at an entity of pure lust. Oh dear god. Suffice it to say, we haven't had a Fallout mod that truly recreates the feeling of a full Fallout experience. No, no, get back in your hole! Other projects are in the works to make DLC-sized mods for Fallout, but many of them have no clear signs of when they'll be crossing the finish line. Well, all of them, except for one. Originally planned to be a small quest mod in 2019, Fallout London is a fan-made expansion to Fallout 4 that brings the world of Fallout across the Atlantic Sea and into the high streets of London. At the start, it was a small team of experienced modders led by the modder Prilodog, but as development went on, it was clear that Fallout London would be something far larger than any mod had ever attempted before. As this reveal trailer in 2021 garnered a very casual 4 million views! Bro, I just reached 100k! All eyes were on London after the disaster that was the frontier. Everybody wanted to see if this was the fated mod to bring a new Fallout experience to life. Well, three years later, we would find out when the official mod almost didn't release. Yeah, just as Fallout London was preparing for its completion, Bethesda decided to apply a next-gen update to Fallout 4, completely breaking everything the mod had built for nearly five years. But hey, maybe the update adds some really good changes to the game that would help make it become a better experience. Yeah. The development team for London decided to throw that update out the window instead, making players who want to play their mod instead downgrade their version of Fallout 4 to before the next-gen update. And thus, Fallout London was released to the public. We can find out what this game is really like. We start our journey in an unknown laboratory, trapped in a vat of... Piss? Oh, this is not right. A group of mysterious scientists, no, that's actually their names, are performing unfamiliar tests on us when BOOM! A group of raiders blow their way in and kill the scientists, breaking our piss tube in the process and giving us a chance at freedom. Waking up in the aftermath of the attack, we escape the lab and crash land our way onto the streets of London where we set off to find out who we are, who the mysterious man behind it all really is, and what our place in London is destined to be. Now, first things first, we have to understand something. Fallout has never had a game leave the United States. All of the games have featured locations and settings based off of a futuristic version of the American 60s, and the franchise has explored other countries and locations about as much as the average American football fan. So a Fallout game set in the UK has to build out a lot of empty space in the Fallout universe to make it work. Something as simple as the Pip-Boy wouldn't be around in London, is that the Nintendo game cartridge? Fallout London sets itself immediately apart from the Fallout you know in its presentation. Long gone is the Vault Boy, as you instead have these fun stick figure characters showcasing all of your perks and abilities. You don't get a Pip-Boy at the start of the game, but instead an Attaboy. The streets of London don't have bandits or raiders, but instead they have hooligans. We can't even have a garbage can now, it's a rubbish bin. A RUBBISH BIN! As I, a blue-blooded American, was surrounded by British slang at every corner, I decided that I would explore this brand new world in the only correct way. As the reborn form of George Washington, bringing liberty, freedom, and democracy to the British Isles. Whoa, whoa, George, I'm so sorry, he's from a different time. And as the first president of the United States took his first steps onto the soil of London, I had to take a step back and realize the first thing about this mod. This apocalyptic London is beautiful.
Every street, alleyway, building, and landmark that makes up the large map of London is filled to the brim with detail. Every small part to bring this city to life. From the coin machines you can use to get a special new ion brew, the small fallout shelters spread across the streets, or even the true-to-life recreation of being shanked behind a pub on the weekend. But as much as I can relish the city this team has built, a map is often only as good as the gameplay it offers. So, what is the gameplay of Fallout London like? It's just like any other Fallout game. That's not a dig on the mod. If anything, it's a compliment. It's oftentimes pretty hard for a mod to be able to capture the same level of exploration and opportunity that a standard Fallout game offers. Even official Fallout DLC struggle to do it. Or hell, full Bethesda games. God, Starfield sucks! Wandering around the map, finding new locations, clearing the enemies, and looting up before moving to the next is a staple of these Bethesda-style games, and I can say for sure that Fallout London handles it wonderfully. Really, I feel like I could explore wherever I want, 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 want. Now, was that because of the mod? Or because of Todd? The performance of Fallout London is, at least as of the making of this video, pretty rough. I could go for hours having a normal experience and suddenly start crashing every two feet I walk. I couldn't meet one of the factions in the game because one of the areas I had to go through to meet them constantly crashed before I could get past it. If you're having similar issues to me in the game, download the buff out, weapon debris, and loading times mod fixes and a lot of the common crashes will be fixed up. If you're still crashing after that, God help you. Or try to find some help on the subreddit, I don't know, I'm a bird, not an IT guy. But when it does work, I can play it just like I did Fallout 4. I see a group of hooligans and ready my weapon. Oh, uh, I, I have no ammo. Uh, that's okay. I can pull out my melee instead. Let's get these guys. Oh shit, they actually hit pretty hard. That, that's fine, I can just go into my inventory and pop a stim pack. Uh, huh. If you're somebody that just finished their time with Fallout 4 and are hopping into London right afterward, here's something to keep in mind. London doesn't fuck around like Fallout 4 does. You see, at the start of Fallout 4, within the first hour of exploring the waste, you'll have a decent pistol, a laser musket, some healing items, oh, and also fucking power armor. And Fallout 4 in general is pretty generous in handing out supplies and ammo to keep yourself topped up. In comparison, when you spend your first hour in the streets of London, you have... Well, that's fitting. You'll find yourself scraping by each encounter with the few tools you have. And when you start building up your supplies and weapons, you'll start meeting bigger threats that burn through your ammo and weapons faster than my patient sitting through a loading screen. And trust me when I say this mod can throw some really dangerous stuff your way. You're minding your own business and see a mangy fox. No problem there, let's just take care of that. Is that glowing? Oh, fuck! Or maybe you decide to take on the Jack Tars, one of the enemy factions in the game. Crazy sailors who use muskets to fight, shooting lead balls the size of my balls at me. And I don't appreciate being pelted with their big balls. Thankfully, for all this ball-centric action, you are able to find a plethora of different weapons, grenades, armors, and more, all specifically made for London and not in the base game. Being a revolutionary man, George was always found with his trusty musket in hand to take out a few redcoats. All right, just gotta oil her up. Yeah, get the ball in there, mm-hmm. Hey, 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 don't come over here, I'm still reloading. Hey, let me get my balls in order, come on. I said earlier that this plays like a Fallout game, and I mean that. But these changes in design, the greater survival early on, the tougher enemies, and even the different weapons all make the experience very unique compared to other Fallouts. But now we gotta talk about the other staple of Fallout. What if there was a place with all the sip of new Coca-Cola? Be... Hello, random survivor. You see that man over there? Yes, yes, him. Kill him, and I'll give you 50 bucks and a lead pipe. Fallout quests are the meat and potatoes of the experience, the stuff that gives meaning to all the exploration and fighting you do. So it's important for a player to find plenty of quests as you explore. And thankfully, Fallout London delivers with way more quests than any regular mod would usually have. They have your standard big storyline quests, your faction quest lines, and they didn't even skimp out on smaller quests too, like helping an old gangster learn how to read and write. But as much as I want to give this mod a pass for the sheer amount of quests they offer, I have to say that the quests in the game are pretty rough. I'm going to reenact an actual experience I had while playing one of the quests in the game to show you what I mean. Hey you, huh? What? Help us out. Okay, but we gotta take out the Millers. But why? No time. Here they come. Oh shit. Okay. Whew. 
Okay, uh, we beat them. Can I understand why we're fighting now? Jerry, why did you betray us? Wait, what? How did he betray you? Who is Jerry? Outsider, I can't decide what to do with Jerry. What do you think I should do? What? I don't know. Why should I be deciding if you should shoot him? Shoot him? Okay. Wait, that's not what I- Okay. Thank you, Outsider. You've proved yourself to be a true friend of our cause. You can consider yourself one of us. Uh, thank you, I guess. Can I go now? Now that that's all settled, why don't I tell you why we just murdered an entire group of gangsters? Sure. Why not? Very often in the questing experience, Fallout London almost assumes that you, the player, know way more about what's going on than you'd reasonably be able to. There's a lot of quests that don't give you much of a chance to figure things out before throwing you a brand new objective. One of the early quests you find at the Prilla Dog Chum Factory is a great way of illustrating this. After you pick up your lovely Prime Minister aww, from the front of the factory, you can head inside to see if there's any work you can do in it. As soon as you enter, you hear a commotion going on inside the factory, and stumble upon an ongoing union movement developing among the workers, led by a man named Andrew Calloway. Ah, uh, proofread your scripts, man. After his speech concludes, you can speak to the boss of the factory, Harvin. Harvin will offer you a job. Namely, he asks you to kill Calloway to quell the union movement. Harvin implies that Calloway doesn't actually care about his fellow workers and is only using the union talk to leverage power against Harvin. This small questline has three different outcomes. You can follow Harvin's request and kill Calloway. You can kill Harvin instead and make Calloway the boss. Or you can convince Harvin to give Calloway the promotion he wants, effectively making Calloway abandon the union efforts. Here's the thing. During this entire questline, I can't talk to Calloway. I can't ask him about the union movement before talking to Harvin. I can't confirm whether he actually wants to help his co-workers or just empower himself. I can only talk to Calloway after I accept to kill him. And the only thing he says is that he'll pay me to kill Harvin instead. In fact, every single worker in the factory has a unique name, but none of them have anything to say about the union, Harvin, Calloway, or anything else. They say nothing. Not even when you murder a man inside the factory. Hell, there are guardsmen in the lobby and outside the building, and none of them have anything to say about a man being shot inside the factory. You are terrible at your jobs. The quests have a very one-track mind most of the time, and anything that doesn't involve the direct lines of that quest line rarely matter. It's not like the quests aren't trying to tell interesting stories either. There are some nice stories throughout London. And hell, not every quest line does this, but enough of them do that it started to bug me. And it feels especially hard for me to talk about because this mod includes this full voice acting. The, train, the voice work isn't bad at all either. There's some genuinely great performances here, which is amazing for a mod. But a few chances to ask questions beforehand, or even just something different than, Hi, how are you? would have gone a long way. But when you do get to understand the quests being given, I found myself enjoying them more often than not. Which now leads us to the next major part of Fallout London. As said earlier, you are on a search for who you are after escaping the labs at the start of the game. And to find out who you are, you will hunt down the man called Mr. Smythe, a mysterious figure who runs the labs you woke up in. This hunt for Mr. Smythe will send you all across London, meeting with and helping out many of the factions that live in the different parts of the city, from the amphibious people born from the radiation in London's waters, to the various gangs and organizations that control the streets, to even the military uniform called the Tommies. God save our gracious queen. Long live our noble queen. These factions you meet will grow to become important as your search for answers will lead you down a dangerous path against the powers that control London. And you have to decide who you will support in that effort. In my own effort to not spoil the story, I am going to be brief in saying that if you enjoy any of the Fallout stories that have come before, you will enjoy this one too. My personal gripes with the story largely exist within the same problem as the quest issue I said before. The pacing of a lot of the narratives in the game go from anywhere between a brisk walk to a full-blown sprint. And while it did sometimes give me time to breathe and learn more, it was often short-lived. It didn't ruin the story for me, but I can't say it wasn't an issue. Even if I had issues with things like the first half of the game, it was still plenty of fun to go through and experience. Besides, it's a mod. It can't take that long to get through. What the fuck? Every time I thought I was getting close to the finish line, this mod had something else to throw at me. A new area to explore, a new quest line to follow, something that kept me going again and again until I came to a pretty stark realization. Fallout London isn't a Fallout mod. Fallout London is a Fallout game. 
everything that a Fallout game has is here, right here in London. The world, the characters, the lore, when they explain it, the quest lines and stories, everything in Fallout London is exactly what I would find in Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 4. Now, is Fallout London on par with these mainline staples? No, not really. The full-on dev team have done something genuinely remarkable. They have made a brand new place in the Fallout universe, filled it to the brim with detail. But it's hard for me to ignore the glaring problems in that world. I haven't even mentioned the sometimes confusing layouts in some areas, the lack of any information on the factions in the game, the multiple quest bugs, and yes, even more crashing. Like a lot of crashing. Fallout London is a flawed experience. It isn't perfect. It doesn't do everything right. But what it does do right is amazing. And at moments gave me the very same feelings I had when I first played Fallout. And I mean, it's hard to beat that price tag. As a game, Fallout London is a flawed but solid experience that any Fallout fan would enjoy. But as a mod, Fallout London is a showcase of what a team of passionate creators can make. And that is really all it needs to be. I had so much fun with London that after this is done, I plan to take a gander back in and play some more. I still need to do all the ra- Wait, what happened to my voice? Bloody hell, have I gone British? Oh dear lord, I have to go back and warn him. The post-apocalyptic staple of the- Wait. What the? Are, are you me? I'm you from the future. If you, if you make this video, you won't be able to turn back- Oh, ew. It's me, but British. What? N no. Well, yes, but you have to listen to- Phew. Got rid of that clone. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. And like any good Fallout fan... Oh, bloody hell!